Okay, so I'm Satish Pillai. Um, I'm an associate investigator at Blood Systems Research Institute in San Francisco, and I'm also an associate professor of laboratory medicine at UCSF. Um, so my research, in a nutshell, is focused on understanding natural factors that affect the size of the HIV latent reservoir. Um, to explain it simply, um, the main obstacle to an HIV cure, um, the main reason why HIV is an incurable disease, is um, a population of cells that are latently infected with HIV. Um, and this population of cells is not affected um, by standard antiretroviral drug treatment. So my laboratory focuses on um, understanding natural factors that affect the size of that pool of latently infected cells. Um, and the end goal is to use that information to design new strategies to eradicate the latent reservoir and achieve a cure for HIV infection. Yeah, that's really exciting. We're really excited with your work. Um, can you tell me what uh, the latest, hottest, greatest findings have been in the past year or so? Yeah, so I can tell you. So from the, um, uh, the results of my first AMFAR funded study, um, we performed gene expression profiling um, of about 80 individuals that were on antiretroviral therapy. Um, and then we also measured um, the size of the latent HIV reservoir in all of these individuals. Uh, and the goal of that study was to identify particular genes that were associated with the size of the latent reservoir. Um, and what we found, um, we found some very, I think, um, impressive results, um, some very significant findings that the expression levels of a few particular genes um, was highly correlated with the size of the latent reservoir. Um, and to describe those genes in a nutshell, um, those particular genes um, encode these proteins that are called restriction factors. Um, restriction factors are typically proteins that attack HIV right in the cell where it makes a living. And so we found that the expression levels of those proteins that directly attack HIV were correlated with the size of the latent reservoir um, in individuals on suppressive treatment. Um, interestingly, in addition to these factors um, working to suppress HIV directly in the, the infected cell, they also serve as regulators of cell cycle in the host. Um, and to explain that simply, um, you know, all cells undergo a process where they make copies of themselves. These genes appear to play a critical role um, in regulating that process of cellular replication. Um, and so kind of one of the end conclusions of this uh, study was that genes that are involved in controlling the rate at which cells proliferate in the body um, have a very important influence on the size of the latent reservoir. And so where we're going from there now is figuring out how to manipulate that um, using a range of laboratory methods. You know, our, our first AMFAR funding was to um, identify particular genetic factors that were associated with the size of the latent reservoir. Um, my more, more recent AMFAR grant um, that I received a few months ago builds directly on top of those findings. So what we had done before was survey um, you know, patients at large by collecting large um, uh, populations of cells and measuring the expression of those genes across a population of cells. Now what we're doing is we're studying single latently infected cells. So we're using some very cutting edge um, bioengineering tools to be able to study gene expression at the single cell level. And so now we're seeing when we look at um, single latently infected cells, can we find particular proteins or particular genes that are associated with the establishment of latent infection at the single cell level, which I think will really dramatically you know, complement and extend the findings that we generated within our first round of AMPAR funding. Yeah, absolutely. The second thing I wanted to mention was in addition to doing the single cell analyses, now um, that we were able to identify a few factors that are highly associated with the size of the latent reservoir, we're using a range of laboratory methods to actually manipulate the uh, expression and activity of those factors yeah. to see if we can um, uh, modulate the establishment and reversal of HIV latency in vitro. Um, and we have some very promising findings that are coming out of our lab right now where um, we've been able to use um, natural human factors to um, modulate the effectiveness of some of these genes that we identified in our AMPAR funding. And now we, we've actually shown that we can reverse latency very potently in the lab. And um, Some of those data will be featured in a publication in the next couple months. This agent you know, that we're working on now that can reverse latency based on that information that we generated in our AMPAR study might be something that we could treat individuals with to um, shock the virus out of latency and um, decrease the size of the latent reservoir. And, 
ultimately achieve a cure. Amphar has been incredibly crucial to our work. So um, uh, that gene so our first Amphar study allowed us to study um, to examine both the effects of um, the expression of genes on the latent reservoir as well as genetic polymorphisms on the size of the latent reservoir. Um, so in terms of my own personal career development as well as the career development of several trainees in my lab, that funding was absolutely critical um, and also helped us to generate a lot of preliminary data to um, achieve, uh, to uh, obtain a larger NIH grant um, to extend these findings. Um, and our latest grant on, on single cell um, studying gene expression at the, at the level of a single cell, um, I think is going to really launch kind of a whole new avenue of investigation within the realm of HIV latency and, and the cure field. So uh, AMFAR has been incredibly crucial to, um, to our development, for sure. Wonderful. Uh, can you tell me how optimistic you are that we'll find a cure in the near future? Yeah, so I think um, despite the fact that there are a lot of promising things that are coming down the pike, the idea of a fully sterilizing cure, and, and the definition I'm, I'm using there is, uh, you know, taking an individual that's infected with HIV and clearing them of every last instance of the virus. That still does seem like a pretty lofty goal. I don't think it's impossible, and I think that there are um, bits and pieces of promising data that have come from different studies that suggest that it is, a, you know, it is a, a possible goal. And of course, there's the um, the ph phenomenal case of the Berlin patient, which suggests that you know, it is possible to completely eradicate the reservoir, or at least as far as we know, it, it seems like the, um, uh, the Berlin patient has exp experienced a complete eradication. So what I think is maybe less lofty of a goal that could still have a very meaningful consequence for people who are living with HIV um, is the idea of a functional cure. Um, and so HIV elite control is often discussed as an example of a functional cure where you don't destroy every last instance of the virus. Um, but the virus remains at clinically undetectable levels in the absence of any continued antiretroviral therapy. Um, since we know antiretroviral therapy is associated with um, certain toxicities and side effects, being able to remove um, antiretroviral therapy from the equation and have a, a patient live with HIV infection without any propagating virus, or at least with minimal levels of virus, I think is a very desirable outcome. So I think a lot of the data that are being presented here, as well as the, the conferences in the last couple of years, have demonstrated that universal antiretroviral ther therapy and early antiretroviral therapy um, can at times be associated with a functional cure. Um, so I think that's really promising, um, and uh, I think the idea of a functional cure um, in the next you know, five to ten years seems possible.